Welcome back guys. Today we'll be doing parametric and partial differentiation. This is coming from Cape Unit 2, Module 1, Past Paper 2018. Question 1 reads as follows. A curve P is defined parametrically as x equal t over 1 plus t y equal t cube over 1 plus t. Determine the gradient of the curve at the point x is half and y is a half. Now, when we say determine the gradient, then the gradient is found by differentiating. So I need to differentiate. I need to differentiate y with respect to x but we have a third variable so that's why it's parametric parametric is when we have three variables now first we have to find dx over dt so we are differentiating x with respect to t and i also need to find dy over dt where I'm going to differentiate y with respect to t. Now looking at this, this is x is equal to t over 1 plus t. So to differentiate this, I'm going to differentiate x with respect to t. Now since it's a fraction, I have to use quotient rule. So let me write x is equal to t over 1 plus t. Quotient rule, I'm going to rewrite it as u over v is equal to, in the denominator, we have v squared. And the numerator, I will have v u prime, or some persons will have u prime v, minus, then I will have u v prime. And some persons would have written v prime u. Now, I will assign the numerator to be u and the denominator to be v. So applying this rule, it says I have v, v is 1 plus t, so I'm going to rewrite it as 1 plus t. And then u prime, I need to differentiate u and that will give me one. It's like an x. If I differentiate x, I'll get one. So if I differentiate t, I'll get one. Minus, then I rewrite what is u. u is a numerator, that is t. Then what is v prime? I need to differentiate the denominator. Differentiate one, that's zero. Differentiate t, that's 1. So all I'll have here is just a 1. And in the denominator, I will have 1 plus t all squared. Now I am going to simplify the numerator. So simplifying the numerator, I will be clearing the bracket in the first area. So multiplying 1 times 1, that's 1. And 1 times t, that's just t. So I'll have plus t, 1 times this t is minus t, all over 1 plus t squared. Now this will cancel, so it means dx over dt is equal to 1 over 1 plus t squared. Now I need to find dy over dt. So I will need to differentiate this where t cube will represent u and 1 plus t will represent v. Once again, we're going to use the quotient rule. So applying the quotient rule, v is 1 plus t, so I go ahead and I rewrite. Remember, I'm differentiating y with respect to t, so that's why it's dy dt. So we differentiate u, so to get u prime, so we have t cube. So we carry the 3 in front, so this would be 3t 
and we subtract one from the power, so that gives me two. So differentiating t cubed, we carry three in front and subtract one from the power, just like if we had x cubed. Then I rewrite the minus sign, and then my u is t cubed, so I'll have t cubed here. Then my v prime is differentiating the denominator. So we differentiate one, that's zero, and differentiate t, that will be one. And in the denominator, I will have this being square. So I will have one plus t all square. Now simplifying the numerator, so let me go ahead and rewrite dy over dt. I will distribute the 3t square, so 3t square times 1, that's 3t square, and 3t square times t, that is 3t cubed. Indices is like a power 1, so t times t square, you'd add 1 plus 2, so that's how you get 3. Laws of indices, when you multiply, you add the power t cubed times 1, that's t cubed, so I have minus t cubed all over 1 plus t all squared. All right, here we can simplify 3t cubed minus t cubed, that will give us 2t squared, so that means dy over dt is equal to 3t squared plus 2t cubed all over 1 plus t all squared. So we have what is dy over dt and we have dx over dt. So what do we want? Now we need to first find dy over dx and since we have a third variable it means I will split this to become dy over dt including the third variable times dt over dx. Now I have dy over dt that's 3t squared plus 2t cubed all over 1 plus t squared. So dy over dx is equal to dy over dt. I will replace it as 3t squared plus 2t cubed all over 1 plus t squared times. Now dt over dx, this is not looking like dt over tx, but I can flip this. And if I flip this, it can become dt over dx. So flipping this to be dt over dx, it means that this fraction will also be flipped. So I'll have 1 plus t all square over 1. So I flip this, dt over dx, I will ha also have to flip this. So this is 1 plus t squared over 1. So I replace this dt over dx with 1 plus t all squared over 1. Looking at this, we can cancel because these two cancel. They're exactly the same and cancel because this is in the denominator and this is in the numerator. So they cancel. So all I'm left with is 3t squared plus 2t cubed, and we don't have to rewrite the 1. So it means that dy over dx is equal to 3t squared plus 2t cubed. So this is a gradient function. No, we're not finished. This represents a gradient function. We need to know, determine the gradient at a point a half, x is half, and y is a half. So what we're going to do, we're going to find out what is t. So once I know what is t, I'm able to determine the gradient. So since this is saying x is equal to a half and y is equal to a half, I can either use the first or the second to find out what is t. 
But the easier one to use is x equal t over 1 plus t since this has a q. So what we're going to do, we're going to use x equal t over 1 plus t. That's easier one to use. That's why I'm using this. So I replace x to be a half. So I have a half is equal to t over 1 plus t. I'm going to cross multiply it. So 1 times 1 plus t and 2 times t. So 1 times 1 plus t, that will give me 1 plus t. And then 2 times t, that's 2t. When I carry the t over the equal signs, I have 1 is equal to 2t minus t. So calculating this, t is equal to 1. For the gradient, which is m, is equal to 3 times t is 1. So I'll have 1 square plus 2 times 1 cube. So 1 square is 1, so 1 times 3 is 3. 1 cube is 1. 1 times 2, that's 2. So the gradient for this is 5. The next question is saying, hence or otherwise, determine the x and y intercepts of the tangent that touches the curve. Now first, I need to find out what is the equation of the tangent. So we are going to use y equal mx plus c. We know what is the gradient and we know what is the coordinates. So substituting that, I can find out what is the y-intercept. So please remember this is x and this is y. So I have y to be a half. m from the previous activity is 5 and x is also a half plus c. 5 times a half is 2.5. So I will have a half is equal to 2.5 plus c, then I carry this over the equal sign. So I have a half minus 2.5 equal c. So therefore, the y-intercept is negative 2. So that means the y-intercept, we just found it, so y-intercept is equal to negative 2. Now we can also find the x-intercept. Let's just rewrite the equation of the line. It's y equals m is 5 and the c is minus 2. For the x-intercept, remember the x-intercept, it is when you cut the x-axis. Now when we cut the x-axis, something is 0. What's that? y is equal to 0. So we can use that information to find out what is the x-intercept. So I replace y to be 0. So I have 0 is equal to 5x minus 2. And we carry the 2 over the equal sign. So I have 2 is equal to 5x. And I divide both sides by 5. This cancels. x is equal to 2 over 5. And that represents the x-intercept. The next example states, let the function fxy equal sine kx times sine a ky determine the partial derivative. And if you realize here, it's asking us to differentiate the partial derivative of x and the partial derivative of y. So first, you have to follow the order that we have here. We have to find the partial derivative of x. So the function, because it's multiplier, we cannot say that this is zero. So we treat this as a constant, hold it constant, and differentiate the sine kx. When you differentiate sine, we get cos. So I write my cos, rewrite the kx, and I differentiate the inside where I have kx, where k represents a constant. So I would differentiate x to get 1. So this will be 1 times k, so that will give me k. And I write it in front of this. Then I rewrite sine a ky. 
I repeat. So I'm first finding the partial derivative of x. So we treat this as a constant, so leave this alone, and we're going to differentiate the sine kx. So using chain rule, we differentiate the outside, so we differentiate sine to get cos. We write the kx. Then I differentiate the inside. This x becomes 1. So 1 times k, that gives me k. Now, I am going to differentiate this function, but now I'm going to find a partial derivative with respect to y. That's the one next one I need to do. So going back to this that I have here, we treat this as a constant. So I have k cos kx. Differentiating the sign, which is the outside, we get cos. And then I rewrite a ky. And I differentiate the inside. So we differentiate the y to get 1. And we're left with 1 times a k. That will give us a k. So let me write the a k here. So we can multiply a k times k, so that will be a k square cos a a cos a a y. And that's it. This is the answer. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.